and additional U.S. funding for Ukraine. As we reported last week, that, of course, is all stalled in Congress. Republican lawmakers seeking to tie that funding to changes at the southern border. Right. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, in fact, is now heading to Washington to meet directly with President Biden. This will all happen tomorrow at the White House. He also hopes to drum up support for continuing that U.S. aid uh, in meetings that he's set to have with congressional members. Our White House correspondent, Serena Marshall, joining us now with more uh, on this. Serena, I guess my first question is, was this a uh, pre-planned trip, or is he doing this because he's sensing that uh, there's this funding gridlock uh, on, on Capitol Hill now? Rob, Alex, well, if you recall last week, I mean, I almost forgot it. A week ago, we were talking about the fact that Zelensky was going to be addressing members of Congress virtually. That got canceled last minute. And then overnight, over the weekend, this trip popped up. It really is a surprise trip by the Ukrainian presidency. And it is that effort to drum up support, a last-ditch effort to try and get that funding for Ukraine passed out of Congress. And remember that Ukraine funding also includes money for Israel and the southern border and Indo-Pacific region. But it's the administration saying that Zelensky is the best advocate for his country, for defending democracy and convincing lawmakers of the need for this funding. The OMB director, Shalanda Young, said that they are out of time and out of money by the end of the year. And Congress only has four days left in session before they're expected to head out on their winter break. But over the weekend, Secretary Blinken really saying what it comes down to is this. I think the only people who'd be happy if uh, the supplemental budget request is not voted on and approved by Congress are sitting in Moscow, uh, sitting in uh, Tehran, sitting in Beijing. This is a time to really step up because uh, if we don't, we know what happens. Putin will be able to move forward with impunity um, and we, we know he won't stop in Ukraine, uh, and he may well end up going after a NATO country. That would bring us in, given our obligations to our NATO allies. So here, an ounce of prevention is really worth 10 pounds of cure. And Ukrainian President Zelensky is also expected to have a joint press conference with President Biden on Tuesday, but also head up to Capitol Hill, where he will have a meeting with uh, both Republican and Democratic senators and a private sit-down with House Speaker Mike Johnson to try and convince them of the need for this funding. It's important as lawmakers continue to remain stuck over including additional changes to immigration policy. Remember last week, President Biden said he's up for some changes, but has accused Republicans of moving the goalposts, trying to push into a direction that they know Democrats can't get behind. But as they are, again, scheduled to head out on their winter break in just a couple of days here, it's important to get those lawmakers, according to the White House, on the same page and get that deal passed. All right, White House correspondent Serena Marshall, live in D.C. for Serena, thank you. All right, joining us now for more on Zelensky's trip, international correspondent Magumi Lim in Kiev. Uh, Magumi... Zelensky visited the White House back in September. Uh, so what does he hope to achieve um, in this latest trip? Well, as was just mentioned, this is indeed his Zelensky's last ditch effort to try to shore up as much support as he can to get uh, that new funding bill approved by U.S. Congress. This has been a long time since uh, Ukraine has been able to see that funding bill uh, come through. The last time it was approved was in December of last year. And this is a huge concern for people here in Ukraine, for soldiers who are fighting on the front lines and, of course, for Ukrainian officials and, indeed, fighting has continued along the more than 600 mile long front lines against the Russian uh, forces although it has slowed because of the uh, winter weather the cold weather and the snow but the fighting has continued and as we know both sides have not made any significant gains um, but uh, the the fighting has largely turned into a war of attrition. It doesn't help that it has turned into a war of attrition where both sides have been firing thousands of artillery shells at each other. And, of course, Ukrainian forces are exhausted. And for soldiers on the ground, they are wondering how long more this attritional fighting uh, will continue. And just last week, uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced a $175 million uh, military aid package. And he said clearly that this could be one of the last uh, defense packages for Ukraine if Congress doesn't approve new funding. And Andrei Yermak, who is Zelensky's chief of staff, as he was uh, visiting Washington last week, told U.S. officials very clearly uh, that if you, Congress doesn't approve new funding for Ukraine, it is very uh, 
likely that Ukraine could lose the war against Russia. So that there's a lot uh, hinging on this talk between Zelensky and Biden this week. And already the narrative is that things are not going well for Ukraine even now. Right. So if this funding goes away, then really, where does that mm -hmm. leave them? Exactly. Right. International correspondent Megumi Lim, thank you so much.